only when I realized that I was going in every day and losing a grand and losing two grand, and then all of a sudden, somehow I'd lost six figures, and then somehow I lost 41,000 in one day, and somehow I woke up with 13 pence in my account. I'm 55 years of age. I'm now a single mom after a relationship breakup. Sadly, I lost my only child three years ago, which did obviously have a huge impact on my life in many ways. And it was partly responsible for triggering a gambling addiction. When you're either an addict or being an addict or recovering from being an addict, your life can never be the same. It can really lie dormant until one day you want to wake up and you've lost your mind or your money or both. In England, the majority of people gamble, surprisingly. So if you have a society where people gamble, you will end up with problem gamblers. I do feel strongly that there is an enormous amount that can be done to remove the uh, endless number of visual uh, cues that bring people into contact with gambling from a young age when it's not necessarily a good thing. There should be no advertising whatsoever, full stop. When we had the Football World Cup last year, it was absolutely obscene the number of adverts that were on when ITV were doing the fixtures because the number of new customers that they were getting through it was really ridiculous and the number of potential addicts that they signed up and lured in with free bets and false offers, again, very worrying. You do not have children watching TV, watching a football game for instance, you get the adverts before and after the game. If you've got two clubs who have a football sponsor on their shirt, that's already, that's two more gambling slogans you're going to see. There's advertising around the pitch. Football clubs might have a whole stand sponsored by uh, a gambling advertiser. You might be seeing six or seven different gambling brands within the space of one television programme. So I think if we are seeing a rise in children problem gambling, it, it, is, it must be linked to that, and, and it must be linked to the normalisation of gambling within our society. If 16, 17, 18 year olds who are gambling, an early big win can dysregulate their reward pathways. So at a kind of neuroscientific level, one of the worst things that can happen is for you to Put ten pounds and win a thousand, or the equivalent, right? Whatever it is, much more than you put in. And there's research to back what I'm saying. It's a harmful thing. So, delaying one's uh, experience of gambling to an age where actually you're less vulnerable, when your brain is more fully formed. Let's say, you know, even if you were 25, you know, rather than as early as now, would be better. One of the things I notice from speaking with many, many families who have lost loved ones, they say that their children were bright, that they were intelligent, that they were full of life. I think often their parents won't have any idea of the volume of their betting and the amount of money they're spending. And I've talked to the parents of, of kids who had addictions and in some of the more tragic cases, kids who took their own lives um, after becoming addicted to gambling. And one thing you often hear is that the parents just have no idea. There is a vision for things, in a way, in this world, becoming smaller, a smaller number of problem gamblers. That's what I'm aiming for at national level. But eradicating it, I don't think we'll ever eradicate it completely. I think we're looking at the status quo for some time. I think there's going to be a lot of scrutiny of online gambling in the next couple of years. You know, everybody has a casino in their pocket, potentially, now. Um, you can get your mobile phone out, you can log on to a gambling company's website very, very quickly, um, and you essentially can make unlimited bets. Um, you know, that has to be a worry. If we don't have better reform within 18 months to two years, I, I would be so scared for people of your age and even younger. Even whilst we've had this conversation today, I can assure you there are people that have lost a week's wages, a month's wages, even a year's wages. People that are on their way to prison, people that are sadly 
on their way to their grave, and that must stop.